Hi, my name is Taylor. Welcome back to another video. Today we are going to make some butternut squash soup. We are in my landlord's garden, which is a beautiful garden that they've been working on for many years, and we are located in Arizona. So without, f without further ado, let's go pick some butternut squash. Fall is here. It's officially here. It doesn't feel like fall, I know, but it's fall. So in here we have some squashies. I'm looking for like the right size squash. We have a lot of squash in here. We have spaghetti squash and we have butternut squash. Some of these mature at different times. Um, and there are certain things that you want to look for when you're picking a squash. Um, but really, I think any of these are okay. Okay, here's a great one. So this one here, the stem's broken off. But, see, that one came off perfect. This will be great for our soup. I don't want to use too big of a squash. And this one feels like it doesn't have too many seeds. Sometimes there'll be like a huge gourd with tons of seeds. So I like the ones with long necks, personally. Um... When you see the stem dying off, that means it's okay to pick. So, yeah, there's some big ones in here. Honestly, two butternut squash last um, months and months after you pick them. So they're a great fall thing that you can store. You pick them all and you store them. And then you'll have soup or roasted squash for months and months. And we're back in the kitchen. I'm so sorry. The um, washing machine is running in the background. This is a real kitchen, a studio kitchen. So there's some real noises going on around here. So I have my butter and squash and I have all my ingredients together. And let's get started cooking. So we're going to start off by cutting up our butternut squash. Do not be intimidated. Luckily for us, all these ingredients are going to be blended in the soup. So no need for any precision here really um, just be careful when you're cutting up vegetables especially butternut squash because it's quite uh, it's quite dense um, we're going to take these seeds out here it's really nice if you keep a compost bowl by your workstation it keeps things organized if you leave any skin on that's okay it's all gonna get blended anyway and we're gonna rough chop a white onion Also, we're gonna uh, rough chop some celery, carrot, and ginger. Uh, a hack that I'm quite happy to have discovered is you can peel ginger with a spoon, uh, which is quite handy, and then rough chop on the ginger. And lastly, we're going to just chop up some garlic. So in a large pot, you're going to add two tablespoons of coconut oil, ginger, onion, the celery and carrot, and you're going to saute on medium-high heat. This is known as a mirepoix, and you're going to do this for about 10 minutes until you see some browning on the bottom. Then you're going to add your garlic and your butternut squash and give it a little stir, and then you're going to proceed to add your spices. I'm using one teaspoon of turmeric one teaspoon black pepper, salt to taste. You guys, I made a real rookie move, real rookie move, and I didn't film me adding the broth, so please use your imagination. I'm using five cups of broth here. When the soup comes to a boil, you're gonna put the incorrect lid on, realizing it doesn't fit until you find the right lid, and then you're going to turn the heat down to low, and you're going to cook this for about 30 minutes. Really important here guys, taste your broth before you blend your soup. All the flavors in the broth. So if the flavors are not quite correct, you can still fix it before you blend it. And we're actually gonna just saute some pumpkin seeds to make a little topping for the soup. Um, these are pumpkin seeds that I'm gonna add tamari to. One cup pumpkin seeds, one tablespoon tamari. They get sauteed and then 
for about 10 minutes and then they're going onto a parchment lined baking sheet to cool. Sometimes I even stick them in the oven just so they can further crisp up. Hey guys, so our soup is ready. Um, it's been going for about 30 minutes. Great way to know when you're ready to blend is to check the um, the butternut squash to make sure it's like fork tender. So this is very, very tender. So I'm gonna go ahead and carefully give it a little, little blendy poo here with an emulsion blender. This can get like kind of dangerous, so please be careful if you're doing this. If you don't have an emulsion blender, you could use a regular blender, but you have to let this cool completely because if you use a regular blender and the steam um, builds up, it could be it could be a uh, chaos and not no bueno. So let's give this a good little stir here. I get kind of crazy with this, like I'll be up in here blending for like 10 minutes just to make sure it's super creamy because um, that extra effort to make this, this soup extra creamy is what really impresses people because these are actually just very simple ingredients and the soup is so simple. So this step, this technique of blending it is really where the technique shines, I, I guess I would say. Um, so to add to the luxuriousness of the soup, the creaminess, I'm just gonna go ahead and add one tablespoon of vegan butter, and that'll make it creamy. Um, traditionally, in a lot of those French soups, oh my god, they add like a stick of butter and like a cup of cream, and damn right those soups taste good, because that's a lot of... Well, oh, fat and fat is uh, it's pretty, pretty, pretty tasty. I'm gonna keep blending it um, just to make sure. So we're just gonna give it a little taste and uh, say a little prayer. Wow, that pepper man. If you don't like spice, you can always not use as much pepper. But frankly, I love it. It's spicy. It's velvety. Um, it's, it's yummy. I'm going to plate this up in a bowl and we'll show you what it looks like plated. Now let's plate this dish up. Uh, off camera, I actually sauteed some chard and kale from the garden. I think they pair really well with the soup. Also, rice or quinoa. Um, this dish is super cozy, hearty. I've been making it for probably over 10 years now, and I still love it during fall or winter. It's got so many health properties. If you guys try it, please let me know in the comment section. I would love it if you tried it. It's one of my favorite, favorite, favorite soups. And thank you so much again for watching. Have a blessed day.